Welcome to worship on the Sunday, June 28th. We are so thrilled that you can join us uh, via video. Uh, we pray that all is well. We pray, of course, to be back as soon as we can uh, in person and worship. In the meantime, I do hope that these services feed your, your heart and your souls. Let us begin, as we do every Sunday, with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our days by your, lie, by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Cut. Now, John, I am going to the confession for... Sunday, July 
5th. Welcome to this worship, Sunday, July 5th. In this uh, service, we'll hear of the mystery, the mystery of God's ways that sometimes seems to be hidden from the, the wise and the intelligent. We are invited to gather around children of God, to hear God's word and to be, to be comforted in our souls. In, in that spirit, let us worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us confess before God and neighbor those things that we have done in the arenas of our lives, our homes, our workplaces, our church, our places of leisure, the ways we have wasted the time that God has given us, the ways that we have hurt or, or failed to help other sojourners in ways known and unknown to us, but of which God is fully aware. Merciful God, I confess unto you that I have not been the holy seed you have called me to be in your world. Too often I have let the concerns of this world choke out that which you have given me. Too often our, your word has fallen on deaf ears. Too often your seed has withered because I have failed to nourish it with word and sacrament and the fellowship of the saints. Forgive me for the sake of your living word, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. God has spread his word like seed upon the world, and that word is a word of grace and forgiveness to all who, who listen and hear. Listen to God's word of mercy. God longs to forgive. God continues to sow love and mercy upon us. His promise is forgiveness planted in our hearts. As a call to the ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Good morning, children. It's good to see you today. We miss seeing you here in church. Um, we want to tell you about something fun that's going to happen. Bible school is still happening this year. It's going to look a lot different, but we are still having Bible school this year. It's going to have some different parts to it. Um, the first thing is next Sunday, you are going to come with your parents at 7 o'clock at night. You can even come in your pajamas if you want to. And we're going to have a drive-through pickup party where you'll drive through the circle in front of the doors by the sanctuary and we'll give you the stuff that you need for the week. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is you'll be able to go on YouTube and look at some... Um, some Bible stories that Pastor Trump and Miss Vicki are recording, and we'll have a bunch of other things on there for you to look at during the week. And then on Tuesday nights, at the same time when we've been doing our pajama time, you will um, gather together uh, online and with Zoom, and we'll see you then to, to have a, a wrap-up together for that week. So it's not going to be the same as, as here when you're all coming in and, and being crazy and hugging everyone. It's not going to be like that, but it is going to be wonderful because we're still going to learn about God's love and we're still going to be together. So um, today is the last day to register so that we uh, are sure that we have enough supplies for everyone. So Tell your parents to please go online to the church website today and register so that we know that you are going to be a part of Bible school this year. It's going to be spread out through the month of July, not all in one week. So we hope to see your name that you are registered. Um, Miss Jenny is going to teach us one of the songs that we're going to do at Bible school so, um, so we can all sing it together and you'll be ready for the first week. to the table and we won't be coming to the communion table but we'll be coming together in spirit and in community and loving each other so the song is really simple the words are come to the table come to the table come to the table and celebrate with us that's the first verse after we do that verse uh, Miss Sandra will shout out the verses for the next one so we can just keep singing right on through 
Come to the table, come to the table, come to the table and celebrate with us. We are all welcome. Welcome. We are all welcome. We are all welcome. So celebrate with us. Let's have a party. Let's have a party. Let's have a party. Let's have a party. So celebrate with us. We are a family. We are a family. We are a family. We are a family, come celebrate with us. Register today so you don't miss Bible school. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word and I, that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who pro prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I think or, or hope that you, there are 
two things that will come out of today's sermon. The first will simply be uh, learning or relearning just a, a wonderful uh, Bible story from Jeremiah that I think we all uh, should know. It's just a great story. And the second will be a rather simple point that maybe, maybe we can take home. But why listen to me? No, I, I mean it. Why, why listen to me? Why listen to whomever? And how do you determine to whom you should listen? How do you know in the midst of all the information that, that comes our way in the face of social media and Facebook and newscasts and commentators and tweets and forward emails, the list can go on and on and includes, it includes, this list includes conversations, just simple conversation with friends and families. How do you know the truth? I mean, the truth seems to be squished and stretched and it becomes so oblong and odd shape that we just don't know what to believe. When we have foreign governments trying to put information into the system to, to effect an election, what then? Uh, we have a little task force we've put together to make decisions regarding our worship and what it might look like and when we come back. And we have two doctors in the group. And their job is to analyze the numbers for us. Otherwise, people might think we are simply putting our fingers in the air to see which way the wind is blowing. We need help getting through all the information about the pandemic. The reality is, of course, that we, we gravitate toward information that, that we want to hear. Not only do, do our computers and algorithms direct the search engines and, and take us down paths of what we like, but, but we also do this with our hearts and our minds. And, our emotions. We, we go back to what we, we like or what might affirm us or, or affirm our thinking in some way. When it, when it comes to information and opinions, we are often people trying to, to drink out of a fire hose. And this happened a long ago. This is all introduction to that Old Testament lesson, that story that I, that I want us to kind of to learn. It's one of the great stories of the prophets, a story about how hard it is at times to, to hear the real word of God. You can read it in Jeremiah chapter 28. Just read the whole thing. It's very short. It's interesting. But I'll, I'll make it simple. The northern kingdom of Israel has already been destroyed by Assyria, and those ten tribes are gone. And now there's the southern kingdom of Judah. Babylon has risen as the great power in the area with his king, Nebuchadnezzar. Jeremiah is a prophet in Judah who cries out to the people that they have failed miserably to follow God's law. They have not shown justice and mercy, and they have worshipped of the gods, and broken their end of the covenant agreement. And unless they repent, their kingdom was, was in jeopardy. The same thing would happen to them as happened to the northern kingdom. Well, they didn't repent, and in 597 BC, Babylon conquers the southern kingdom of Judah and sacks the temple and taking most of the riches and of the temple and a lot of the priest and the king himself back to Babylon as, as prisoners and Judah, the southern kingdom, becomes a, a puppet state. Of course, there were those in Judah who still opposed Babylon. They wanted to revolt and align themselves with Egypt. They were seen as the faithful, actually. They were probably seen as the patriotic, if you will, saying, surely God is going to jump in here. Jeremiah, on the other hand, spoke another word. God told him that it was God who allowed Nebuchadnezzar to, to afflict uh, the people of Judah. The people must submit to him or suffer further hardships. And to illustrate this, Jeremiah put a yoke, you know, an animal's yoke that they pull, you know, a yoke, a wooden yoke around his shoulders, the weight of the yoke, and he walked around the city with that yoke as a symbol of Babylon to which the people of, of Israel, of, of Judah, had to submit. And this message, you can imagine, was not popular at all. Now, in the midst of this, there were other prophets, probably establishment prophets paid for by the temple, and Hananiah was one of them, the one we heard about in our lesson. He preached another word. There is no reason to think that he thought he was lying or making it up as he went. The text says that he was prophesying what he thought was, was, was surely true, namely that God would break the yoke of Babylon soon and very soon, that in two year, years the turmoil would end that God would free the people and bring them back from Babylon to a restored temple. After all, God is a, a God of the covenant. God almost has to do this. There were competing messages. One is not what the people want to hear. The other is what they long to hear. 
And Hananiah even takes the yoke off of Jeremiah's shoulders and he breaks it, showing that it will be broken. Well, what does Jeremiah say? He says in the lesson we heard, Amen. Let it be so. I hope you speak the truth, Hananiah, and only time will tell. Eventually we will know. Jeremiah is willing to allow competing truth claims to exist at this point. Maybe God has spoken to Hananiah. Maybe Jeremiah has been somehow supplanted. But a new word comes to Jeremiah. Tell the people, God says, because they will not submit. More troubles will befall. Instead of a wooden yoke, God says, I will put an iron yoke that none can break. And tell Hananiah that as a sign that this word is true, in one year, Hananiah will die. Jeremiah goes back to Hananiah and tells them this, and in a year, Hananiah does die. The yoke of Babylon remains strong on the necks of the people. We now know who spoke the truth. Jeremiah spoke the hard truth to people of Israel, even though they did not want to hear what he had to say, even though it was not what Jeremiah wanted to say. God has not spoken to me directly any time. I don't think we have to choose between prophets in our culture. It's a little different for us, but we do have to wade through competing voices, maybe religious voices of preachers. There are plenty on TV to choose from. There are those who claim the mantle and title of pastor who, and reverend who are simply self-appointed. And how do you choose between mainline even denominations at times? Or more likely, you must listen to a variety of political voices or media voices and pundits and others. And many will claim that they speak with the authority of, of almost of God. Maybe they don't wave a Bible around. Maybe they simply claim a, a moral authority. There are many ways people claim to speak for God, if you will. And since I am no prophet like you, I must search God's word, search my heart, listen to others to hear God's voice in them. And the question we must all ask is this, what might God be saying today, even if it is not what we want to hear? What any of us may want to hear. Hannah and I was telling the people that the plague of Babylon, that conquering army, would be done away, would be gone away soon. It was what they wanted to hear. We would like to hear, we want to hear that COVID is going to be away very soon. We search for that statistic or that antidote to help us hear what we want to hear. And it's the same with political issues and social unrest. We would like to think that there's some easy fix to the racial divide or the social inequities of our nation. If we just elect the right person, if we have a, a conference of some point, if we just do better training, that's, that's what we want to hear so that our lives go back to normal. But what if the troubles are much deeper and we need to hear that it will take longer and require sacrifice from those who have more for the sake of those who have less? So how do we know? I'll be honest, I, I, I can't answer that. I do know that as people of God, we have to be willing to listen to God's word even when it is uncomfortable, even when it is not what we want to hear. There are certainly a lot of voices out there right now that make me uncomfortable, yet they resonate for me. At least they resonate as honest, as true, maybe even as holy. For me, these are the voices that are less angry, if you will, less violent, but they may be strong. They may be loud and forceful. Maybe I need to be able to hear the truth even when it comes in a louder package that makes me uncomfortable. Maybe that is my weakness. But I know that God says to Jeremiah that there have been many prophets who spoke of war and destruction but that the, when the one who prophesies peace, when that comes to pass, then we know that that is truly God's word, that God's final word is a word of peace. And that gives me great hope. That is a word I long to hear. 
but I have to deal with the fact that maybe if the message does make us uncomfortable, that might be a sure sign that we have to listen. There have been a lot of discussions in our communities, in our church communities, and they have not been easy or comfortable. We can't just come by eye, come by off things away, like sort of like, like Hananiah was trying to do. So let's listen. Let's start by listening and put aside the question, what's in it for me? And instead ask, what is at stake for the other? What is at stake for our neighbor? In our gospel, Jesus is encouraging his disciples as they are being sent out to be missionaries to tell people that the kingdom of God has come near. He encourages them by telling them that all who welcome them, welcome him as well and welcome God as well. They stand in for God. They are the, the voice of God, the hands and feet of God. They can trust that their message is from God and of God, just as Jeremiah's was, even if at times it is not received well. He assures them that, that, that they receive them and welcome them. Then they also welcome him and welcome him. They welcome God. God goes with them. He goes with them. Surely they can go in assurance that God's word will be received, even if all they get out of it is a cool cup of water. A cool cup of water for these my little ones. Maybe that is a good sign of knowing who is speaking God's truth. Maybe a voice when we hear it. Who are these little ones? Surely they are the disciples, Jesus' little ones before him. But they are also all the little ones of God, all the weak, those who are small in the eyes of the world, those who don't count, who are of little value and little account. If the prophet or the preacher or the political pundit or the person is in some way offering a cool cup of water to a little one, maybe you are that little one, holding out that cup for any of the little ones in God's world, then maybe we can trust that they are in some way, maybe a small way, a part of, of God's conversation with the world, a part of the conversation we share, the voice we share, as little ones sent by God to bring cool cups of water in whatever form they may be. And you know what a cool cup of water is. It is that which refreshes the heart, the body, and the soul of little ones. The end of that Hananiah-Jeremiah story is not good for Hananiah. In many ways, it was not good for the people of Israel. The yoke would remain longer. However, it also revealed to them that God was still speaking to them, that God was still present with them, that even in the difficult word, there was a comfort that God was still at work even through Nebuchadnezzar, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of difficulties. May you, may we hear God's voice. May you be open to the word of God. May we all be open to it, to it even when it speaks difficult words that make us, make us squirm, that make us ask hard questions. Yet, when we listen, they can be even cool cups of water for our hearts and our souls. Amen.
us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us confess our faith now using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, Encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be stewards of the earth which you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, pour out your grace unto us during this time of strife and discord. Give us eyes to see our brother's need. Give us ears to hear our sister's words. Give us speech to speak the language of peace, healing, and reconciliation. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or dealing with grief. We especially pray for Tommy and his family and those others whom we name now. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and always. Amen.
like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.